Hi! Welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 53. It is Monday, September 7th, 2015, and I hope you are doing well. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, which is where this episode show notes and all episode show notes are. I sell my hand spun yarns at an Etsy shop called the Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn. And we have a Ravelry group called the Corner of Knit and Tea. Please come and join us. So hi, welcome to the podcast. I am recording a day late on Monday because it is a national holiday in the United States. It is Labor Day. And I am very, very much enjoying my three-day weekend. I have had um, a surge of crafty productivity. I have finished a bunch of things. I have possibly started a few new things. Um, and I am just enjoying having a long weekend. I delayed recording by a day so that I could finish a few more things to show you and so that I would have a few more things to talk about. So um, it has been a good week. Uh, my coworker came back at work, so I had far less to do. And this coming week, my boss will be on vacation. And I am taking some online classes for a couple days, um, doing some graphic design stuff. So I am excited for a kind of laid back week. Um, which will be nice after the last couple. Um, and as I said, I've had a great weekend, spent some time with my husband, which is always nice. We have been outside a little bit, walking a little bit, um, some meals out, um, but I have also gotten a ton done at home. Um, not as much cleaning as I probably should, but um, a ton of crafty things, and I'm just moving down my list, checking things off, and I will talk a little bit about that as um, the episode goes on. So I guess it's time to start in um, with the episode. Today I am drinking um, lemon verbena tea from Harney and Sons. This was a sample tea bag that I got um, at the Tea Fest months ago. I am sort of just, I keep a box of all my tea samples and things and go through there and pick out something that sounds good when it's time to record. Um, and I brewed that up today in my Jenny the Potter mug, so I am feeling very sheepy. I am also wearing... Um, my new Lisa Congdon shirt, which is BU. She offered those as a special... Um, it was a little bit like a Kickstarter. You had to get uh, enough people had to buy for them to be printed, but I got one um, and I am super happy. So today I am just wearing all the sheepy things. And like I said, drinking my lemon, lemon verbena tea in my Jenny the Potter mug. Ooh, that's really nice. Very light, um, a little more herby than I'm used to um, the lemon teas being, but it's, it's so a little bit more savory instead of sweet, I guess. Um, but it tastes quite good. Um, today has been very overcast. We had thunderstorms this morning. It was over 95 yesterday, um, and today so far it's about 75, and it's about one o'clock here. So it is not super, super warm, although it's very humid out. Um, but it looks dreary, and I'm anticipating fall, and so I decided to go for hot tea today. So that is what I'm drinking. So let's get on to the knits. I actually have a finished knit, and this was one that I cast on for and cast off for in the same day, which is kind of amazing. I realized that I did not do um, an August charity hat, so I decided that I needed to do one. And I went looking um, through my stash, um, and I have some a few more acrylics that I'm just using up. And actually, this was kind of interesting because I pulled this out, and they were all bald. Um, it was a couple balls of yarn, and they were all balled the way my grandmother used to ball yarn. And I can't imagine, um, she died in 2000, so I can't imagine that I still have yarn from her, um, but it was kind of interesting. And I don't really know where it came from or what it was. I have some ideas. Um, but anyway, I knit the Violet Waffles hat by uh, Haldora J. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it is basically a rib and then just a waffle stitch. Um, and it was an easy, simple hat. Um, since this was kind of a plain green, I thought that I would um, use a little texture. I think it's probably Plymouth Encore. That is what it feels like. A little bit of acrylic, 
um, or a lot of acrylic and a little bit of wool. Um, again, I knit charity hats for a local school that serves a local charter school that serves underserved kids. Um, so I'm looking for things that ha need a minimum of care. Um, and that will keep the kids' heads warm if they don't have other resources. So I have a friend who works for the school and I just hand her um, a whole bag of hats. I'm up to 10 for this year, which is basically what I wanted. I'm hoping to crank out one or two more and then give them to her. It is early September. My guess is it'll start getting really chilly in October and November. So my plan is to try and hand them off to her next month and then keep knitting for the following year. Um, but that is my one finished object, the Violet Waffle hat so um yeah and that used around um I think between 90 and 100 yards so that is finished and technically like I said that's my August um but I will do one for September too I just need to see what else I have in the stash I'm running low on acrylics and super washes um because I don't always use those myself so I have a ton of Cascade 220, um, but it's all non-superwash. So I don't want to turn that into hats for kids because I don't necessarily trust that um, it will. I, I need something that's going to be washable. Easy care. So that is the one finished object. Um, I did finish or get halfway through an object. Last week I showed you a pair of socks I was knitting in some yarn that I'm reviewing. The yarn is a good yarn from Sarasota, Florida. They do exclusive colorways based on photos that the husband takes um, when he's diving. And they're beautiful and I will talk more about it next week. I'm hoping to have um, completely finished to next week so then I can do my actual review of the yarn. But I decided to knit the monkey pattern because I thought it would be um, the best for this yarn and I am super super thrilled. Um, I am knitting the monkey pattern as written so it is a top down. I did um, change and do a twisted rib on the cuff because I really like the way that looks um, and then uh, followed the pattern almost exactly, did a um, heel flap and gusset. Um, uh, there was a little bit of pooling around the heel flap and gusset which is just to be expected from variegated yarn because it changes the stitch count but but happily it went back into exactly what I wanted it to for the foot. Ooh, these are kind of on here crooked. Let me see if I can make this a little bit better. Um, so, and then we went down the foot with the pattern and I um, chose to do a slightly more rounded toe. I will say that this pattern is written for 64 stitches, which is quite a bit more than I normally use. I usually do 56 stitches because I have a small foot um, and I did do 64 stitches on this one and they fit okay. So it must be something about the fabric that's a little bit snugger because um, I expected them to be big, but I didn't want to do the math on the pattern um, and it turned out not to be a problem. So that is my first sock. I'm calling these Sea Monkeys. Um, the exclusive colorway is called the Cabbage Key and again that is from a good yarn in Sarasota, Florida. Um, I will hopefully have the second one finished next week and will be able to do a full review um, and I will give you a slightly closer view of how beautifully this is knitting up. So I was super pleased that I finished that first one. If you remember last week, I had a little bit of the cuff. Um, so that was good progress. And I have not cast on the second yet, but that is going to be my project this week. So you know that I always talk about how I'm not getting enough done and I have too many things on the needles. And of course my cure for that is to cast on something else. <laughs> so uh, for the last, uh, month or two I have been watching, um, well, let's go back. I started a Cozy Memories blanket several months ago and you might remember that I'm choosing to do the hexagon pattern from Attic 24 which is a crochet pattern. Um, you do the centers and then you join as you go to create hexagons. Um, and I really, really, really like the way it's turning out and um, it is not always the first thing that I pick up because um, I am much slower with crochet than I am with knitting and um, I find it takes a little bit more brain power. Um, and so I really have not put in enough work on it in the last um, several months and I think I have decided to sort of table it for now. But part of the reason that I have decided to do that is because my friend Anna at Knit Group has been knitting a um, her own version of the sock yarn blanket and it is called the Memory Blanket by Georgie Hallam and it's basically mitered squares um, but they're slightly bigger than bigger squares than a lot of the very small patterns. 
and um, they set it up so that all the diagonals go in the same direction. Um, and I've been watching her work on this and she and I have been trading scraps um, because her squares take roughly about... I want to say seven or ten grams and mine take two or three. So oftentimes she'll have ten grams and she'll knit a square and then she'll give me the last gram or two to work on mine. Um, so I've been looking at her blanket and then last week the Bakery Bears podcast, um, Kay posted that she was doing a worsted DK weight blanket and all of a sudden I got an urge that I needed to do something. And I have had a bag sitting in my craft room for a while of odds and ends of leftovers of DK and um, worsted weight yarn. Um, some nice ones, some less nice ones, but little balls that I that are like not enough to knit a hat with, a charity hat with, um, or even really stripe with, and I'm not really sure what to do with them. And then I started thinking about all the leftover little bits of hand spun that I have and what I could use some of those for, particularly the um, thicker ones. And then I started thinking, well, you know, if I hold fingering doubled, it could be close to a worsted weight. And there you have it. I am off starting a new project. So I, again, I'm using the Memory Blanket Pattern by Georgie Hallam. And this is what I have gotten. Um, I started on Friday and I'm already up to um, seven squares. Uh, basically what is going on is I kind of went through um, my worsted scraps and I am using this as a carrot system for myself. This weekend I had a whole list of, I guess I started it this way, um, a whole list of chores that I needed to get done. And so every time I finish a chore, I get to knit a square. <laughs> so, and it's funny because I only kind of count them for major chores. Um, and one of my friends was like, well, you should, you should count it every time you do a load of laundry, you should. And I'm like, well, I have so much that I need to do. If I count a square every time I do a minor task. I'm going to be so busy knitting squares, I'm not going to have time to do anything else. <laughs> so um, it's only been for major squares or major chores. Um, and I have a couple more chores today. So I'm hoping to finish up to nine today um, and then get a nice picture. So I this was the first square. And this is my hand spun. It is sweet as cherry pie. It is from it is cherry pie from Southern Cross Fibers. And I made a sweater out of it. Um, uh, a few years ago. Um, it's the big one that's in my profile with the cowl neck. Anyway, I had about a skein left over, so I expect I'll put a couple squares in there. Um, this one, the yellow, is Mad Tosh, Tosh Merino Light, and I held it doubled. Um, it is the Candlewick colorway. That was the second square. The third square is Wolmai's Ebenholtz. That is the chocolatey brown that I just used in, um, the uh, Wonderland top, the Wonderland Mary Jane mashup. The fourth square is some hand spun. It was some BFL, and this is one of the colors that I used in my um, sample for my design, so you'll be seeing that shortly. So that is a bright turquoisey blue. Um, the fifth square that I knit was this purple one, and this is Miss Babs Yowza in Tulipa. That is what I knit my... Um, last year's uh, Nanny Swaymo, the, the cardigan that I knit. Um, that is, um, oh, it was the, it was the um, Perfura cardigan. So there we go. The uh, sixth square is Madeline Tosh. This is Tosh Marina Light in Sea Salt. And this is um, actually the other color in my design. So it was the turquoise and the sea salt. And this is finally um, some more hand spin. This is 2F by hand in the Calaveras colorway. It was um, a crazy twist in an arbitrary spin along colorway um, quite a long time ago. And I knit um, a hot water bottle cozy in this and only had a little bit left. Um, and it was a nice worsted weight. So I have two more colors um, picked out to kind of round out the um, first block of nine. And I think I'm going to keep adding to this in kind of square block. Um, to keep it always square. Eventually I can decide if I want to go rectangular. Um, and luckily because um, each square takes about eight grams. So um, all the minis that I traded for a while ago will actually probably be enough to do a square here and then keep it um, for if I ever go back to my crochet blanket. 
So I am super excited and this is um, what I'm working on. I also started this because last month um, Sally Jane Cameron of the Pink Hair Girl Knits and um, Sally uh, Trollope of Wool Diaries did um, Sock Blanket Madness um, where they uh, basically held a, had a week where you should knit blanket squares and just try and get as many as you can. And there were no prizes. It was just bragging rights if you got the most number of squares. And she is repeating that again in September from the 12th to the 18th. And although she calls it sock blanket madness, I believe it can be any scrap blanket and any weight yarn, um, especially since there aren't prizes. I don't think there are really rules. Um, and I really, really, really wanted to participate this time despite the fact that I have a million other things that I should be knitting. Um, so I wanted to start one so that I could participate. So <laughs> that is where I'm at, but that is the beginning of my sock yarn blanket. So yeah, the next two things I want to talk about are knitting. Um, one of them is already knit and one of them is um, something that I want to knit um, hopefully starting this week but I thought um, I have I, I keep saying that I'm gonna bring things with me to show you what I want to knit for Roxy. Um, Roxy's second birthday is coming up at the end of October and I had talked about wanting to knit her sweater but I have a whole bunch of commitments coming up and I was trying to figure out when I was going to slot that in and then I realized that I think I think it's, well, I did Camp Loopy this summer. I didn't do it last summer. I did do it the summer before. So that would be the summer of 2013. So two years ago. Um, the summer of 2013, I knit a child sweater for one of my projects for Camp Loopy. And I didn't have a child in mind at the time. I just knit the sweater. And I believe the sweater comes in one size and it's about a 2T. Um, I think she knit the pattern for her son, who was at the time about two. And it is called Binnick. Um, it's a French pattern and it is by, um, I'm going to butcher this, but hang on two seconds. It is by Solène Coulor. Um, the last name is C-O-U-I-X dash L-O-A-R-E-R. And it's Binnick, B-I-N-I-C. And I knitted it in Shalimar Yarns, um, Zoe, which is their sock yarn in the colorway American Beauty. So I realized that I had this in my stash and Roxy is going to be two and all it needs is some buttons and I decided that this is what she's going to get for her birthday and I'm actually going to knit her another sweater for Christmas which gives me a little bit more time. So I pulled this out of my box. Like I said, this is the sweater. It's really cute. It's a very open um, wide boat neck and you're supposed to get a couple little buttons. So and I think I ordered some but if I can't find them I'll have to just find some more. Uh, excuse the folding. It will need a reblock it's been put away um, but I think this will be a super cute sweater for Roxy um, and it is machine washable and dryable which is always useful with children's sweaters um, and I am just uh, really happy that I found this and really happy that it will go to her. Um, I knit a few baby things kind of back when we were still thinking about having children and kind of put them away for our someday kids and as it turns out we're not going to have children. So um, getting rid of them is a little bit bittersweet um, but I also love that I can find um, children and babies who are worthwhile and um, deserve beautiful hand-knitted goods and of course Roxy is my favorite person to shower in hand-knitted goods. So that is Binnick for Baby so she's going to get that for her birthday so even though I didn't knit that right now um, I wanted to show that to you because that will replace what I'm going to knit her. Um, the second thing that I brought to show is that I said I wanted to knit Roxy some new hats for winter and one of the ones that I have really really enjoyed and or really really been looking at and wanting to knit for her and the model on this one is so freaking adorable but this is the Tubey hat T-U-B-E-Y by Wooly Wormhead and I love it it looks like it is just basically knit almost like a pillowcase or a square. I mean, you knit it in the round, um, but basically it looks like you just go straight up and then um, finish the top. It is in the um, Wee Wooly Toppers book, um, and I 
I'm going to purchase that book so that I can make it. It's called Wee Wooly Toppers and it's available for 10 British pounds, which I believe is right around $15. There are a number of other great um, child's hat patterns and I plan to make Roxy a few of them. But so I am going to make Tubi. I thought it would look fabulous in hand spun. And this you have seen. This is the Into the World. Um, it's called Death. It was one of the mega cell fibers um, based on a character in the Terry Pratchett books. Death is a character. It is um, despite the morbid sounding name, it is turquoises and lavenders and black and it is just super fun um, and it is in a super wash merino which is part of the reason I bought it on that base because I thought it would make something nice for Roxy. I believe it will make an adorable hat and she needs some mittens to go with. So um, this is probably a sport weight so I will have to adjust a little bit. Um, I'll probably actually have to do a gauge swatch um, and adjust a little bit but this is, um, I'm gonna wind this up right after I speak to you and then hopefully get started on that. My goals for this week are to finish the second sock and um, maybe do a winter set for Roxy. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, I am sort of in a hurry up and wait position right now. I have finished the first sample of my shawl and now I am waiting for the actual materials to arrive, um, the ones that the pattern will actually be in. Um, and it is fiber from um, the company. So I will need to spin it up before I can knit the shawl. So I have about a week probably of, I'm hoping the fiber comes this week and I can spin it up, but um, I have at least a week of downtime where I need to um, knit some things, but I'm kind of waiting because I really need to work on the bigger project. So I am trying to pick some little things that I can do um, to kind of um, get some things done that are on my list and also manage my time effectively. So. Speaking of my sample, I did not bring it in to show today. I sort of thought about it um, and then I forgot it, but I will say um, that uh, my sample is now ready to go to test knitters. And I already have two good friends who have volunteered to test knit, but I probably could use a couple more people. So I wanted to see if any of my viewers were interested in test knitting. I will tell you it is a two color shawl, uh, fingering weight yarn. You definitely need one full skein of fingering weight, so 380 to 400 yards probably. And then the other skein uses um, half to two thirds of a fingering weight skein. So if you have some leftovers and you have two to 300 yards, you're probably in the neighborhood. Um, hand spun is desired. If you have hand spun, I will definitely be giving um, preferential treatment or, or preferential selection to those who are able to knit with hand spun. Um, although I understand that not everyone has hand spun. So um, I'm also looking for a few, um, a few test knitters to knit in commercial yarns. So if you are interested, I'm looking at about a month turnaround. Um, I have the pattern basically ready to go. I have to put a few finishing touches on it this afternoon um, and then I am ready to send it out to testers and I would need it back right around the beginning of October. Um, so and today is September 7th so you'd have right around a month. Um, I think my hard deadline is probably October 5th or 7th. So if you are interested please contact me. You can um, PM me on Ravelry. I am Fluffy K there um, and I will um, return replies to all of you. Um, but please understand that um, I'm probably going to limit it to probably five to seven test knitters. So if I receive too many responses, I may not be able to select everyone. I will keep um, names if you're interested for future. And like I said, if you have fingering white hand spun to use as at least one of the colors, um, that would be awesome. So let's move on to the spinning section of the podcast. Last week I talked to you about how I had a second braid of Hello Yarn Fibers Polworth Silk in Slumber and how it did not look quite it did not look much like the first one. Um, and I have finished spinning that and that is washed and dried and this one came out closer to a sport weight. It is 320 yards um, and as you can see this one is quite a bit lighter than the other. Um, the peach in this one really sort of reigns supreme with little bits of purple and even the green is lighter. It's more sagey and it doesn't quite have the um, teal pops that the other one had. Now um, just because I think it's kind of hard to tell, um, oh and I will say that this one is already spoken for. It has sold. Um, so it is uh, getting sent off tonight to its new home. Um, 
I took a photo of the two skeins side by side. It's on my Instagram. So if you follow me on there, you have already seen it. But these are the two skeins. Um, and as you can see, the one that I, the second one that I spun is quite a bit lighter than the other. Um, and it's interesting because looking at two photos completely separately, they did look like similar colors. Um, but you can see that the skein on, well, it's my right, but it's probably your well, I don't know because I don't know how it'll flip it. You can see that one skein is quite a bit darker than the other. The purple really showed through there, whereas um, the peachy yellow tones really show through in the other skein. So that is a little bit of a lesson on dye lots and that is what I finished. While I am waiting for the fiber to come in, I am continuing to try and spin for the shop and for the craft show, which I am doing again this year. Um, this is another braid that will go up in the shop and or to the craft show. This is uh, Hello Yarn Light as Feathers. It was one of the recent, might have been the June colorway. Um, and it is on Romney, which is a slightly longer um, stapled wool and usually a little bit rougher. Um, this feels a little bit coarser, but it's still very soft and actually much softer than I would have expected for Romney. Um, it has shades of blues and greens and little pops of yellow and some dark kind of um, navy and violet. And I think this will be a really pretty spin. Um, because it is Romney, I had sort of figured I would spin it um, of a weight for socks. So I think it would make a great set of socks. Um, it might be a little rough for being worn right close to the skin. So that is what's um, probably on the spinning wheel this week, unless my fiber shows up tomorrow, in which case I might abandon and work on that first um, so that I can get that design going. So I had quite a bit more for you this week and um, that is kind of it. Um, like I said, it's been a wonderfully crafty weekend. I have more things. Um, my, my next blanket square comes when I finish the pattern and send it out to testers. Um, and then I need to spin at least an ounce, maybe two, and maybe then I can knit another blanket square um, and maybe cast on for the second sock tonight. That are That is my plans for the day, um, and or I should say those are my plans for the day, and um, maybe even jump on the treadmill. I could use a little workout because we're, um, we've been dining out a lot this weekend. So I hope that you have had a wonderful week and a good weekend. If you are in the U.S., I hope you've enjoyed your three-day weekend, um, and if you are not, I hope you have a, a good holiday weekend coming up soon. Um, I will say, as I always do, have a wonderful week. Happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye!